All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to our second live stream for December. I really hope everyone's Thanksgiving was good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, funny thing about our Thanksgiving, this was my very first time to host, which was exciting. Um, we actually were able to get a pasture raised turkey. And if you've ever gotten a pasture raised turkey before, it is not cheap. And I was praying that I would not burn the turkey, but I didn't. It turned out really, really well. And I highly recommend in the future, if you can get some pasture raised turkey, makes all the difference. That was such a juicy, delicate, just just really good um, turkey. And um, we had family come over and it was really great to see everyone. And um, funny story, another thing about Thanksgiving is my first time hosting, I definitely made the majority of the dishes and um, my um, I had family come over and they generally brought one dish for the meal and then some desserts. And so here I am preparing the majority of the meals for Thanksgiving and my husband actually said that his favorite was a casserole that my sister-in-law brought and gotta say I felt a little betrayed a little betrayed <laughs> so he's supposed to like my food best I mean he can't like he can't like someone else's food better that's just that's not right <laughs> so but um either way I kid but it was a wonderful Thanksgiving and I hope you had a great Thanksgiving as well so, um, welcome to all who are able to get on this live. We are going to be talking about um, saving time in the kitchen, especially when it comes to us having um, using freshly milled wheat. We're baking our own bread. We're making a lot of things from scratch. But if you are watching this live, be sure to type in the comments um, first proof that you're watching this live. And if you are watching um, the rebroadcast, re -broadcast, then type in second proof in the comments to let me know that you watch this not live. And it's really great to see y'all. Be sure to say hi in the comments so I know that you're here. Um, Carol, oh, thank you. Thank you. You feel my pain. <laughs> hi, Kim. Good to see you too. Um, Okay, so we're going to start getting into it. And do you know that I have a new freebie for you guys that I'm really excited about? And we're going to be getting into that. <clears throat> but um, when it comes, um, some comments that I received um, whenever I talk about milling our own wheat and everything is people say, no one has time to do that anymore. And now granted, the people that are generally saying this are ones that completely disagree with consuming wheat and whole grains. So it's just one of the, I know it's one of the, the excuses they put out for it, but I will say that, yes, it does take more time than picking up bread in the store. Of course, in this day and age, it is so easy for us to get food. We can go through a drive through um, We can just go to a grocery store and pick it up. And there's pretty much, I mean, anything that you want, we have it. And in this day and age, super easy to get. But when it comes to actually doing things the way God intended them to be done, um, cooking meals from scratch, um, doing things the old fashioned way. It does take some time. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to do bread in five minutes. You're never going to see a video of how to make bread in five minutes. Ain't going to happen. Y'all <laughs> it's just, it's just not, but think of the, what you're trading for with your time. And, um, and exactly, Carol, it doesn't take that long at all to mill. I think many people think when that we're milling our own wheat, as Sue Becker talks about, that they picture we're out back with a mule walking around <laughs> some grain mill, which is just not the case anymore. We have modern technology, just like it takes way less time or it's just easier to wash our clothes thanks to washing machines, dryers things like that. Um, we have vacuums instead of sweeping. Have you we can maybe even have a robo vacuum that vacuums for you. And same thing with our grain mills. Our grain mills now are electric. Um, you don't even have to have a hand mill unless you need to or want to. And it's just as simple as dumping the grains and you can walk away. I, I generally start preparing um, other things while my grains are milling to be making the bread. So that's definitely not a valid excuse that no one has time. You have time for what's important. Some tough love there. So just tough love from me to you. If it's important to you, you're going to make time for it. Simple. 
I mean, simple. So, but I am still going to um, share with you guys some tips that I've learned that I use. Um, <clears throat> some that I use, some that I don't because I don't have to. Um, saving time. So you can consume those healthy whole grains, whether it's freshly baked bread, um, you know, whole brown rice or the good oats, things like that. So we're going to be talking it. First of all, um, Carol has actually already given us one that um, you have a baking day. So for me, um, I am a stay at home homeschooling mom. Um, we also I'm also part of classical conversations in which I'm a foundations tutor. So that's a weekly co-op that we do. I do have that to prepare. I also have this YouTube channel and I also just have a, have a life. I have a life. And while I do call the kitchen my office, <laughs> because I do spend a lot of time in there, not everyone is home all day. Um, some of you may have a full-time job outside of the home. Um, others may just have other responsibilities. Um, we are not, we don't participate in a lot of extracurricular activities. So our evenings aren't necessarily Go, going all over the place. Um, so with that, if that is your case where you generally are just super busy and not at home, have a baking day, as Carol said. So you can have baking days where you bake enough bread. Now this does require some planning. So possibly like meal planning. So you know what you want, where you can make things, pancakes, um, loaves of bread, and you can either put it in your refrigerator or freeze it even so that you can consume through the week and you're only baking one day. You're only dedicating one day. And people do this for so many things. Um, full on meal prep, cut up all your vegetables, whatever it is. Um, you know, some people brown all the meat that they're doing for that week. So just dedicate a baking day. Very simple. So that way you're not scrambling throughout the week. You're not going to be tempting to go out the fast food because you're already going to have some things at home. <clears throat> so thank you, Carol. We were on the same wavelength with that one. Now, another tip that I have is don't forget about your quick breads. There is nothing wrong with muffins, pancakes, cornbread. Um, these are very quick breads. I mean, muffins, you can have milled and on the table in 30 minutes. And they're delicious. I mean, just do some eggs or, I mean, whatever, if you're okay with just the muffins, whatever you're wanting to do, don't um, forget the quick breads use them. Um, again, cornbread, cornbread, I can have on the table in about 35 minutes, because I think it takes about 20, 25 minutes to bake. But that's a quick bread, just mill it, mix it, boom, there you go. Um, and these still contain your freshly milled um, whole grains. So it's still very healthy for you, but it's not taking the time for your traditional loaves of bread. Um, also, don't and don't forget that there are other grains like oats, rice, um, oats. They, those don't take too long to cook. Um, same with rice. I mean, you can get rice on in about 45 minutes or so, a little bit shorter if you've taken the time to soak it. Or, hello, rice cookers, crock pots, things like that. Use them to your advantage. We have these tools and they're wonderful. <laughs> um, so use, use those tools. And again, quick breads. So that leads me actually to, that leads me to number three, and that is to use your freezer. Carol's already stated this as well. We mentioned it in tip number one, that you can freeze certain breads, not just your breads. Um, what I actually do is I usually always have a gallon Ziploc bag with some freshly milled corn flour in it um, because it does take a little bit longer for me to send the corn through my mill for cornbread. And so I usually keep some of that already milled in my freezer. So it is maintaining a good amount of the nutrients still. Um, where all that I have to do is quickly mill up some soft white wheat or whatever wheat I'm using, just mill that up. And then I already have the cornmeal. I just take that out, mix it up cornbread. So you can also freeze that. You can also freeze some flour as well um, if you do want that. So say, for instance, if you know that you want to make muffins, um, say it's Sunday and on Wednesday, we want to make some muffins or you want to do it the next morning for breakfast, go ahead and mill that wheat that you need, put it in your freezer. 
it is going to help maintain the nutrients still. And especially if it's just the next day or so, you're going to be fine. But it saves you that little bit of extra time um, right before the meal when you make it. Um, so freezer, freezer is your friend. Now, one thing about the bread loaves, if you're making my loaf, I do, I've never done this because again, I don't have to, but I do know people who buy my bread or friends that I give it to that they go ahead and slice the bread. Um, so if you do want to freeze your big loaf bread, you do want to slice it first, put it in the freezer. And then throughout the week, when you want some toast, just pull out a slice and toast it and you're good to go and talk about a quick breakfast on the go as well. If you're, if you can have just toast, I know not everyone can have that, but, um, that's, that's one thing that you can do as well. Okay. Savannah says, I assume you mean freeze rolls, but find after a month, they do not want to rise. Yeah. Certain things like I've never fully gotten, um, a good dough where say I, with rolls or something like that, where I've put the dough in the freezer and then take it out so it can rise later. I've never successfully done that. I also have just not done it a lot because again, I, I don't need to, I'm generally home in some capacity. So, um, but yeah, that is one thing It's probably, I can see after a month, they probably don't want to rise. Um, I can definitely see that. So keep that in mind. It sounds like maybe a week, week or two. Do they still let us know Savannah if they still do fine after a week or two? Um, but again, don't um, forget about your freezer. The big thing I use the freezer for are my pie crust. Whenever I make pie crust, I make about four to eight <laughs> pie crust and then freeze them because they will last um, a good while. And all I have to do is pull them out of the freezer, thaw them out for maybe like 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes or so. And they're malleable for enough for me to do because pie crust for me take a, it, I feel like it takes a little bit more time um, to do all that. So whenever I do it, I make several and then freeze them in individual pie crust and just like a quart size that walk bag. And then I have pie crust. I, I did this the other day. I made pecan pie very last minute. Um, and I already had a pie crust made. So I was able to pull that out. No problem. Okay. Um, Carol. Okay. We're getting clarification about the rolls thing. So Carol said, I put some rolls in the freezer first time freezing the dough. Okay. So <clears throat> yeah, you probably could do roll cooked rolls in the freezer, but I don't know about the dough. Um, fourth tip I have is, um, get you a bread machine. <laughs> if you really want to do this and you love the fresh bread, I'm, um, get you a good bread machine. I, I do not have one. I don't have experience with one. However, I do know that the Zoarushi one is extremely popular. Um, kind of like the Cadillac of bread machines. So do know it is more expensive. Um, if you can find it like on Facebook marketplace or yard sale, I would definitely snatch one up. Um, again, I don't have one because I don't need one. Um, I choose not to have one more appliance in my house, but if I was out of the house all the time, if I was working all day or things like that, all you have to do is just dump all your ingredients in, in the morning, turn it on. And then you have fresh bread when you get home. <laughs> How cool is that? So again, another wonderful machine. Um, I think I have the Zorushi bread machine linked below. If not, I will I will link that um, after this video because I can't link it while live. So um, I will be sure to link that so you can see that below. But that is the really, really good one that I know people like. It's very customizable. Um, so even down to like if you're in a more humid climate, that's important or a drier climate or high altitude, you're able to make those settings well, with, or sorry, you're able to tweak those settings to fit where you live. Otherwise, a lot of the cheaper bread machines, it's just one setting for all. So depending on where you live, it may not work out. So just something to think about. But again, if if you're gone all day, a bread machine is wonderful because you get a loaf of bread and all you had to do is dump the ingredients in. Ta-da! I mean, pretty easy peasy. <clears throat> now, the last thing I want to talk about is introducing my new freebie. I'm so excited. So what I have been doing for years <laughs> to save time is it always kind of annoyed me when I was in the kitchen and I know how to make bread. I know how to make muffins, cornbread, pancakes, all of these recipes. I know how to make 
But many times I would forget, okay, or just be confused. Oh, wait, oh, is that one teaspoon or two teaspoons of salt? Or, you know, be a little bit hazy on the ingredients. And I'd have to stop what I was doing, leave my kitchen because my cookbooks are not in my kitchen, go to my office area, um, rummage through my cookbooks or my recipe binder, try to find it. And, you know, it takes that time to do that. And so one thing that I did is, and this is kind of funny, I wish I had a picture of it is on the inside of my cabinet. So if you open up my cabinets, there are so many recipes <laughs> that are taped all over the cabinets because that allows me to just open up the cabinet door and I have my most used ingredients list for things right there. And I have a million sheets of paper. It's a ton, like post-it notes. I mean, it's random. It doesn't look pretty at all. I mean, it's inside the cabinet, but I went ahead and made for you guys <clears throat> And I know it's going to be backwards, but this is an ingredients quick sheet list. And as you can see, I went ahead and put, okay, I don't think it's backwards for you guys. I hope not. Where, oh, it's backwards for me. <laughs> um, we have one loaf of bread, two loaves of bread, and three loaves of bread. Right there at the top, the ingredients for that. And then just a reminder of how long to bake it. So it's already converted. So if you, and this is my loaf bread recipe. So this is the one I have on my website where it's two loaves. And then I went ahead and converted it. So one loaf and three loaves, because sometimes I know with my Bosch universal mixer, I know I can easily do, I can do three loaves. I can't really do more than that. So I went ahead and stuck with three loaves. You can always double and, double and triple these if you want to, but I doubt anybody really would. So these are easy conversions for you guys. And then on top of that, I also included my cornbread, one dozen of muffins, two dozen muffins, um, and then my biscuits, my pancakes, and my pie crust. <laughs> so it's one sheet. Again, this doesn't, it's not the recipe. So if you don't know what to do with these ingredients, th this is this is not for you. Now on the um on the download. Um, and again, I'll go ahead and put that in here um, for you guys. Uh, let me see. I have it here. It will also be in the description box below after this video um, stops going live, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in the comment section for you guys. Um, let me see here. Okay. There you Let me see if that works. Yep. So there you go. Um, and I've started for you guys. So um, that's where you go download. Now you are signing up for my newsletter. Um, to get this free sheet. If you're already signed up for my newsletter, um, that's fine. You can still get this. And if for some reason the download doesn't work um, on my grains calculator um, cheat sheet, it's um, I usually haven't had a problem with it. I've only had like two people message me for some reason they didn't get to the download. If that is the case, just contact me. You can email me. It's, it's going to be on the email that send it to you. But this is going to be great. I'm actually going to put this in a sheet protector because believe it or not, um, I'm a homeschool mom and I don't have a laminator. <laughs> can I, can I call myself a homeschool mom? If I don't, if I don't have a laminator, I, I don't know, but, um, so I'm actually just going to put it on a, um, in a sheet protector and then remove all the random sheets of the recipes and ingredients and just have this along with some other ones that aren't on here that I use a lot, like my sweet potato pie recipe, things like that. So, um, I hope this is very helpful for you. Again, I keep it just taped inside my cabinet. So, and it's above my mill and my mixer. So I just need to open up that cabinet door and then I have it all right there. And I can just glance at it as I'm adding ingredients in. It saves me so much time, especially if I'm wanting to, um, okay, now this time I want three loaves instead of two. I don't have to take the time to convert that and calculate that in my head. Um, I've got it right there where I can, I can go from there and it saves me so much time. Um, and I hope it saves you guys as well. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> everyone saying that they, they really like this. So I hope that this helps for you. If you have any questions about it again, just let me know in the download, you not only get this, but one of the pages does have links and to the full recipe with instructions, as well as the YouTube video I did with it. So if any of these, you, you have no clue what to do with the ingredients, no problem in the download, I've linked to the instructions and the video about it as well. So this is just for whenever you know how to do it, but you're tired of having to find where your recipe is, or you want to save time converting 
in your head. Um, this is something that's really going to save y'all time. I hope you really like it. And I made it pretty. It's got, and I don't know if you can see, but it's got the pink and green. So it's a bit prettier than my random sheets of paper that I have. Um, all right. So again, after this video, or if you're watching the rebroadcast, it will be in the description box below, as well as my grain calculator. That is still free and available. If you haven't gotten that yet, um, that just helps you calculate how many grains you um, you would need to purchase um, and keep stored up for your family for however long that you want to make sure you have a stockpile for. So something something simple to help you with that as well. Okay, so now we're going to just get to any questions that y'all might have. Y'all may have, and it looks like we do have some already. Uh, let me see. Okay, um, we have Island Girl. How? Okay, do you sift your milled hard wheat berries? I do not sift. Um, the only time I do sift is whenever I'm going for a lighter baked good, like a cake, um, sometimes a cookie, um, and my biscuits. I definitely sift out for my biscuits. Now, in saying that, a lot of people, or not a lot of people, I have had some people concern about sifting the wheat. I am not making white flour. I'm using some El Cheapo sifter that our great-grandmother's probably used <laughs> themselves. And um, so it's not taking out all of the wheat and germ. It's not. I would estimate I'm taking out maybe about maybe 10% of it. So you're still going to have a good amount of the of the um, germ and bran in there for your um, for your nutrition, as well as um, it lightens the flour as well. I hope that makes sense. So especially for my bread, um, breads. Definitely. I do not sift my muffins. I do not sift, um, only for my biscuits, things that I'm wanting lighter. It's why in old recipes that you may come across, like from your great, great grandmothers, where it specifically states, especially for cakes to sift the flour. That's why, because way back then, um, they used to not have white flour like we do today. Okay. Um, also another question, what type of corn do you mill for cornbread? Um, you can mill any sort of whole corn. I generally get the organic white corn, whole corn I get from Azure Standard. Um, you can use a yellow corn, but um, not popcorn. I do not mill that for cornbread. So just a white or a yellow dried corn. I mean, it's it's very basic. It's not a spe um, specific type. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Okay, so Teresa asked, do you ever make pasta or egg noodles from home mill grains? I'm working on it. <laughs> I have to say, I I have attempted pasta once and it was a huge mess, a horrible disaster. We're talking like eggs everywhere on my counter. Because if you've seen how it's done, they say like, oh, just mound up the flour in the middle, drop some eggs in and mix it up. Yeah, I tried that. I'm going to try it in a bowl next time because that was bad, like really bad. <laughs> so I actually do have wheat durum, um, the wheat berries of wheat durum, which is traditionally used. That is sim semolina that you find in pasta. So I do plan. I do want to experiment more. Unfortunately, I do not have a pasta maker. Um, so I would have to do it all by hand, which you can do. But um, I'm working on it, Teresa. I'm working on it. <laughs> and I'll let you, I'll definitely do a video whenever I get it figured out. Um, so if there's any other questions, um, these are some great ones that y'all have. Please go ahead and comment below. Otherwise, we are getting kind of close to the end. Um, I hope this was helpful. Um, okay, let me see here. Ooh. Okay, so Carol's really fancy. She just made a type of noodle that I haven't even heard of a udon Japanese noodle. So you made udon Japanese noodles with Durham and Emmer turned out great. Oh, a combination of Emmer. Okay, I could I could see that working. So that sounds delicious, actually. I might, I might have to try a combination too. But first, I just have to figure out pasta. And again, I'm a little intimidated by it because the first time I did, it was just such a disaster. Um, but good for you guys for already trying. Um, so again, we're gonna just going to 
we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. I really hope that it was helpful for you. I am doing live videos every month, the first Tuesday of every month right now. And, um, and again, if this is, if you're watching live, be sure to comment first proof. If you're watching the rebroadcast, be sure to, um, comment second proof, a little bread humor there um, to let us know. And again, let me know if you have any questions. Check that description box below for your new ingredients quick sheet freebie. And if you have any questions, I'm always here for you guys. And I hope you'll have, again, a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, and I will see you on Friday with a new video. I know I've um, kind of took a couple weeks off with posting a new video, but Friday will be a new video. And it's actually my latest Azure haul that I did and also giving you all updates about what's going on with Azure, as well as um, some tips I've learned through the years ordering from them. So be sure to check that out on Friday. And as always, I really appreciate y'all being here. We managed to get through an entire live without any crazy spammers this time. Yay. <laughs> so, and the camera was better as well. Um, so thanks again for all of y'all being here and spending your evenings with me. And I'll see you next month. Bye.